excuse me, six o'clock, we'll call to order the City of Douglasville's City Council Legislative Work Session for tonight. Um, the first thing on the agenda was the invocation, and we had that done by Pastor James Harper earlier, as well as the Pledge of Allegiance. So I will go through the announcements, and then we will get into the um, agenda that's printed. I'd like to welcome you to the Douglasville Legislative Work Session. This is a work session where agenda items are presented for discussion and no official action will be taken this evening. Official action will be taken on these items discussed tonight on uh, Monday, next Monday. If the business you are here for is not listed as an agenda item, there will be ample time under the agenda item, comments from citizens and delegates section for you to discuss your business. There's just a few protocol um, items I'd like to make you aware of, and, and hopefully we'll all be on the same page. Please listen carefully. Um, I ask that you to please keep your comments and presentations on a professional level, dealing with the facts that are important for this governing body to make our decisions. We will not accept comments that are considered by the chair to be of a personal attack on any individual or group of individuals. You'll receive a warning from the chair, and if you deviate from this requirement, a second deviation will result in you uh, discontinuing to speak this evening. Only one person speaking at a time. Please do not applaud or react to speakers, speak from the audience, cheer, or carry on conversations with the audience, or be disruptive during the meeting. I'll remind you that uh, we are only required to accept public comments during the um, public hearings, and we're not required to accept public comments on any other items for the council, unless at the end you have um, a concern, you can bring that forward, and we'll be here in a, in a posture of listening. If you have a cell phone or any other electronic device or social media, we ask that you would please put those in silent mode or turn the phones off or iPads um, until the meeting is over so that we'll not be disruptive. Now, this is how the agenda will be handled this evening. The committee chairperson will read the agenda item. Then that person representing uh, the agenda item or applicant will make his or her presentation. Um, and this will be your opportunity to present your information. Myself and council members were possibly asked clarifying questions or any additional concerns we may have to get a better understanding. After that, the committee chairperson will ask for comments or statements from the audience. There is a maximum of 20 minutes for those in uh, favor of the item and 20 minutes for those in opposition. Each person has five minutes. Um, if you would like to speak, there is a card that's on the outs um, outside of the room on a table that you should have filled out. Are we still accepting virtual comments, Assistant City Manager? Okay, so everything is in person. So well, we used to have an opportunity for those to call in, but if you'd like to speak, um, please give us your name and address for the record when you come to the microphone so we'll have that information. And again, you should have filled out a card on, uh, that is located outside and hand that card to the city clerk, Ms. Vicki Acker to my right, who's sitting next to the city manager. This meeting is not a question and answer format or a debate. We're just here to hear your information. Please address your comments to the chair and not to members of the audience or to city staff. And uh, we ask that you will not be repetitive if we have more than one person that's coming for an agenda item that you all would raise uh, various concerns but not repeat the same information. And again, if you'd like to come for citizens and comments at the end of the meeting, citizens and delegates that make comments at the end of the meeting, we'll be happy to hear from you with any business that is germane to the city of Douglasville. Now those are, that's all the protocol issues and now we'll get into the meeting. Um, the first committee is Economic Development Committee and that's chaired by the Mayor Pro Tem, Council Member Terry Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business under the Economic Development Committee at this time. Thank you, sir. We'll move on then to Finance Committee. The Vice Chair is Mayor Pro Tem, Council Member Terry Miller. Oh, I apologize. That's, um, y'all yeah, been doing too much. That's um, Council Member Chris Watts. You're thank, the other one. Thank okay. you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. We have uh, three items. Item A is to adopt an ordinance to amend the City of Douglasville's fiscal year 2020-2021 general fund budget. And Mr. Shaneberg will present. Good evening again, Madam Good Mayor evening. and Council. Uh, Shane Bird, 6695 Church Street, and I am here this evening to present the General Fund Budget Amendment Number 5. Um, as we presented earlier in committees, uh, just to go over some of the changes to this budget amendment um, or to the budget, uh, we have an increase in revenues uh, related to COVID-19 reduced revenue projections at the beginning of the fiscal year. We had budgeted conservatively 
However, we have found that our revenue uh, has actually come in significantly higher than originally projected. Mm -hmm. So uh, that has led to an actual decrease in use of fund balance. So by the end of fiscal year, year 21, we're expected to only use around $900,000 in fund balance. Um, and then going into our expenditures section, we just have a few minor changes to expenditures. Uh, we have a $50,000 increase for building maintenance, and that's primarily related to COVID-19 cleaning. Uh, that was not covered by the CARES grant or other COVID-19 related grant monies. So we're essentially covering that difference there. And then a $32,000 increase uh, related to court services, group insurance, retirement, and non-employee health insurance. And then lastly, a, an increase of $32,000 uh, with uh, West Pines part-time. And we offset that through some turned over or vacant positions in West Pines maintenance. And if you all have any questions, that concludes our fifth general fund budget amendment. Thank you, uh, Mr. Berg. Um, we didn't, we discussed this uh, during committees tonight. Uh, do we have any questions that have come up between then and now? Mr. Anybody? Chairman. Yes, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, not a question, just a comment, kind of a question comment. <laughs> okay, Shane, I know that we did balance the budget last year with the CARES Act, and so now we are anticipating uh, revenues have been great, so we don't have to use as much of, from our fund balance to balance our budget. But uh, the American Rescues Act, are we going to be able to reimburse our city coffers back from that? I understand the answer, but just for the public so that the citizens will know about their tax dollars. If you can I, respond to the question. Yes, ma'am. It's essentially uh, primarily used for revenue replacement for revenues that had been lost during COVID-19, mm -hmm. um, as well as, you know, special revenue funds where tourism services declined due to tourism decreasing across mm -hmm. multiple cities and counties. So it essentially will operate uh, to help uh, balance those things out again to get us mm -hmm. back to where we should be um, pre-COVID. Yes, sir. So we're able to reimburse ourselves, city manager. Um, yes, ma'am. As he said, replace those revenue funds. Ms. Callan will be, um, and I will be with you all in the next couple of months to discuss the American Rescue Act funds because as of right now, we still do not have a final dollar amount mm -hmm. uh, that the city would be entitled to. So, but we have filled out all of the paperwork that we need um, to provide to DCA um, where we will uh, ultimately receive that funding. Yes, ma'am. So I'm on those weekly calls as the city manager is with Georgia Municipal Association and all the mayors in the state as well as um, the U.S. mayors with the U.S. Conference of Mayors to get a better understanding of that, those resources from the um, American Rescues Act. So we look forward to the government helping the cities to recover during the COVID time. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Vice Chair. Any other questions or comments? Just like to you know, thank uh, finance, uh, uh, Karen Callen, uh, just, you know, the conservative uh, way that they've gone about it is, uh, you know, we've, we've done better than a lot of municipalities mm -hmm. is, is coming through COVID. And so appreciate y'all's hard work on that. And since the chairman is not here, I'll just leave this on the agenda for, uh, to vote on. To vote on, on yes, sir. That's Monday. great. Thank you, Mr. Berg. Uh, Thank you. Item B is authorize the mayor to sign Amendment 1 to the city's standard agreement between owner and architect dated March 27, 2020 with uh, Goodwin Mills and Kaywood Inc. GMC for professional design services for the city's Jesse Davis Park improvement project. And um, Mr. Marcus Thompson's got this. All right. Good afternoon. Marcus Thompson, 6701 Church Street. Uh, so basically, this item was discussed at the May 17th committee's meeting. Um, it basically includes combining all phases of the Jesse Davis Park project into one um, project package. Um, it also includes the phase four addition, which consists of the swimming pool with the splash area, splash pad area, as well as the, uh, let's see, the restroom facilities and also um, parking plan field renovations. So, was there any more clarification needed for this item? Council? Anybody, Madam Mayor, go ahead. Thank you so much, Mr. Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Thompson, for the report. Um, I just wanted to thank staff and GMC and the, you know, the elected body and the citizens, of course, for bringing all of their ideals and everyone work, working together so that we are able to have 
um, a project that we're all proud of and excited about, and especially excited about bringing the pool back. I know that was an area of contention, and sometimes we thought the pool was off, it was on, it was a splash pad, but uh, the citizens really um, asked sincerely about having the pool reinstated in the project, and so we appreciate GMC doing that. So um, I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you so much, Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, any other comments? Yes, hi. Thank you, um, Mayor uh, Robinson. I just want to say you summed it up very well. I um, concur with her comments. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Um, thank you, Mr. Thompson. And uh, again, I, I think because the chairman's not here, I'll just yes, leave sir. it where it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. And item C is authorize the mayor to sign a lease with Broad Street Station LLC for airspace above O'Neill Plaza for a balcony and for ground and airspace for outdoor stairs. Mr. Uh, Sarawitz has got this. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good Aaron evening. Sarawitz, 6701 Church Street. Um, attached, you have a lease agreement for the, the patio um, mm -hmm. for the back of Broad Street Station's um, building. Um, this is very similar, and actually it's almost identical to uh, the agreement that you would have signed with uh, Irish Bread Pub mm -hmm. um, when they were, were in operation. Um, so it's an annual agreement. Um, it'll be prorated since we're in the middle of the, the calendar year, and it'll re we'll have to um, go through the process again uh, early next year. Do we have a, a date uh, that they are expecting to potentially open? Uh, we have Mr. McPherson here um, with Broad Street Station. He could speak on that. Okay. Um, we're, uh, we're shooting if for a 710. If you can give us your name and address, I'm sorry. Uh, we know you, but we just want you to have it down for the record. <laughs> uh, Sean McPherson, uh, 12377 Veterans Memorial Highway. Yes, sir. Uh, Broad Street Station. Yeah, we're shooting for a 710 grand opening, uh, potentially a 626 soft opening right now. Okay. June, you said June 26th? Um, June 26, correct. Okay. okay. June 26. All right. That sounds good. So we're excited. Looking forward to it. Yeah. We're excited. Any, uh, any other comments? Mr. Sherwitz, is that all we've got on this one? That's it. All right. Great. And it looks, you know, it's like you said, it's, it's almost like a renewal, just uh, different. That's right. Uh, owners. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Thank I'm going to leave that where it is. Uh, since <laughs> Uh, and um, just in case there's questions yes, sir. on Monday. Yes, sir. So that's all I had tonight, those three items. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Sarawitz. And um, we appreciate you all bringing the information to us out of this committee. We'll move on then to the next committee, which is Housing and Community Affairs Committee. The chairperson is Councilmember Dr. LaShawn Burdanley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. No business tonight. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Mm hmm Legislative and Intergovernmental Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Samuel Davis. You're welcome, sir. I don't know if are, are mics on. I just seems like it's kind of quiet. We need some elevator music me? or something. It's kind of quiet. Can you hear me? Is it? Yes, sir. I heard you. It's just oh, okay. a little quieter. A Personal and Organization Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> we have one item tonight, personnel organization. Reappoint B. Keith Rollins as Chief Municipal Court Judge for a term of July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022, and authorize the mayor to sign an employment agreement with him for that purpose. And uh, Ms. Cochran's coming forward. Uh, I just, I'm going to have one question for uh, Mr. Roll, uh, Judge Rollins. Uh, uh, what's the B stand for? Benjamin. Benjamin, okay. I didn't know this that. This is grandson's oh, name. I did not know. All about the Benjamin. I'm going to give it to him because it's about his contract <laughs> and y'all know it, nothing's changed. And I'm Angie Cochran, the court administrator, 2083 Fairburn Road. And I'll let him do is that, is that our address? That's our address. <laughs> v. Keith Rollins, your chief judge, 2083. Yes. 2083 Fairburn Road your public safety and municipal court building. Yes, sir. Um, do you have anything you want to say to counsel, uh, Judge Rollins, or? I will I always take the opportunity. <laughs> you don't ever want to give me a microphone <laughs> with a, <laughs> open a uh, No, I appreciate the opportunity to continue to serve the city and, 
as usual, I will do my best, use my abilities to serve as best we can and keep our municipal court the paragon of justice and looking forward as we can. Uh, I tell every one of you at every opportunity I have, I love my job yes, and sir. thank you. Thank you, Judge Rollins. Uh, anybody have any questions or comments? Madam Mayor. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Judge Rollins, for serving as our municipal ju judge. How many years have you served? 2004, so that would be 17 years. Wow. That's 2004, uh, yeah, 17 years. That's a long time. <laughs> oh, what the, your wife knows. What? He's only missed one day. He's. Oh, one day in well, 17 that, that was because years? of the conflict. Excuse? I had to recuse myself uh, 15 uh, years or so ago mm -hmm. uh, because the defendant that was brought in on a city code violation had just purchased a property from us and we mm -hmm. still held, held the mortgage. So we had a potential interest in the outcome. So I had to recuse myself and our associate judge had to sit that one time. Yes, sir. <laughs> my goodness. Well, you have um, been an exemplary uh, judge, a, an exemplary leader. It's, um, I was just reading scripture today and it talked about when they had deacons coming in and they appointed Stephen to be a deacon. It really isn't the title that makes a person it's the leader. It's once you have that, lead, that title, it just really shows who you are and you are a leader without the title, but you are certainly like Solomon, you do a wonderful job and having compassion with the people in the court. So we appreciate you and thank you so much for serving. That's all I had to say. And I know you love your job. I get lots of letters <laughs> from citizens all the time that tell me um, you know, how you've been very fair with them. So we well, appreciate your thank service. Thank you, and your analogy is not lost on me. That's <laughs> yes, sir. Thanks, thank y'all. You. You're welcome. Any other one? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I understand you do like your job. That's <laughs> what I hear. Uh, you, uh, Judge Rollins, you, you're an exemplary uh, uh, member of this of the city, civic team in Douglasville, and you, you, you set an example for the rest of us. Um, you set the bar high for it, and, and we tremendously appreciate it, and not, not just in your civic duty, but in the, in the number of lives that you've clearly touched over the years. And that means more than anything else. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's, uh, I have many opportunities to do that because of what y'all have allowed me to do and in this position and hopefully have taken it from just guilty, not guilty, pay your money, go on to, oh, I made a mistake. Let me help you get up with a hand up. Mm -hmm. You can learn, <laughs> you don't do this, it's against the law, but let's not ruin your life over it. Let's turn, turn this and go move forward instead of looking back at your mistakes that you've made over life. There's a whole new world out there. Let's move forward from this and give you the chance to turn that life around. So th thank you. I don't know if you'll appreciate this term, but you're, you're a firm, bleeding heart. <laughs> that makes any sense. I, I don't know. There's some folks over on uh, Earl Lee Boulevard <laughs> tonight that might disagree with you. But, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, anyone else? Yes, thank yeah. you. Um, Judge Rollins, uh, it is always an honor to have you in our presence and your lovely wife, Ms. Um, Sandra. Mm -hmm. I just want to say that... Um, the way that you conduct your court is always very professional and um, you're very approachable. I've had the opportunity to observe in your court and um, also be there with some students who really appreciate what you have done for them as well as students and other citizens. So I want to say thank you so much. Thank you very much for the comment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Davis. They say the best for last. Uh, yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Cochran, can you come to the microphone? Have you had any trouble out of Judge B. Rollins? You just don't want to know. No. He is awesome. Okay. That's no trouble. Right. No. Thank you, Judge Rollins. And you have to tell the tailor when you used to be in that little matchbox and when they leave out of there running. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he, and he uh, Ms. Cochran, and he'll holler out, got one running. 
<laughs> Thank I, you, Joe. I, I bumped my head on that door going into that courtroom 50 times before, because I didn't always remember to duck. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. My hand. And, and if I may say also, Ms. Cochran runs the place. She keeps <laughs> it organized and allows me to do what I need to do, her and her crew. Um, but it's the, the organization makes us operate more efficiently than we ever have in my Great. recollection before. Great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, Estes, go ahead. Um, just very briefly, after, after hearing all these wonderful things everybody has to say about you, I think you're right. We must be related. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I will uh, also thank you for your service. Um, you do a fantastic job for our citizens, and we really appreciate it. And your wife makes incredible dinner rolls. Oh, I know it. <laughs> so thank you both. The roll patrol. <laughs> He's, my great grandfather was an Estes, mm. is what we were referring to. As a could Pal be related. Paulden County Farm. Hmm. Just in back, I think where Home Depot is. <laughs> Council Estes, you're going to have to excuse yourself on the vote now. Yeah. <laughs> um, Judge Rollins, the very first house my wife and I bought, you were the closing attorney. I think you were a closing attorney for several uh, Mine? closings of ours, but uh, mm -hmm. appreciate, appreciate all that you do for the city. Ms. Cochran, also uh, your hard work and uh, doesn't go unnoticed. It's a smooth uh, machine y'all have got going over there. Mm -hmm. And I hear, I hear it's pretty quiet over there. I heard rumors <laughs> that it's pretty quiet, but that's good. Um, anybody else before we move on? All right, thank you, uh, Judge Rollins. And uh, we'll place us on the consent agenda. Yes, on, sir. Uh, I don't see any opposition. Monday. Thank you. Madam Mayor, that's all I had tonight on the personal thank organization. Thank you, Judge Rollins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Judge Rollins, Mrs. Rollins, and uh, Ms. Angie. Cochran. We'll move on then to Planning and Development Committee. The Vice Chair is Council Member Mayor Pro Tem, Terry Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have uh, two items tonight. Uh, the first is to refer to the Planning Commission a proposed ordinance to amend Article 2 of the Unified Development Ordinance to designate R6 single family residential as a residential residual zoning district, which shall no longer allow new zoning applications for this designation. It is it is the specific purpose and intent of the residual R6 zoning district that the existing tracts of land currently zoned R6 be utilized as currently permitted and developed. Ms. Patrice Williams, you'll Patrice fill us Williams, in anything else we need to know. All right. Patrice Williams, Community right. Development Director, 6701 Church Street. Um, this item we're asking that it be referred to the Planning Commission. They'll hear it at their July meeting and then it'll come back before you uh, that next round of uh, council meetings. Thank you. Any Comments or questions from the council? Um, being that this is just primarily a house cleaning item, I'd like, if there's no objection, I'd like to put it on the consent agenda. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to the next item, that is to consider a request for approval of a development plan for Riverside West Business Park, Track D, for 24.82 acres at 1700 North River Road in Landlot 173, District 1, Section 5, Parcel 13, for plans dated February 12th. 2021, the application is by Rooker Riverside LLC. Ms. Williams. Okay, Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. The applicant, Rooker Riverside LLC, is seeking development of a non residential project per City of Douglasville UDO, Section 12.07. The subject property is zoned light industrial with a slot for indoor storage warehousing. The project has recently been approved for a special <clears throat> land use permit and a variance. The proposal currently depicts a rear load distribution center warehouse. The development will have two access points off of North River Road and will be located in the existing Riverside West Business Park. The exterior elevations indicated, indicate paint, painted tilt up concrete, glass storefronts, and a pre-finished metal. City staff has reviewed the application and the attachments and has determined that the proposed plans meet the development requirements of the UDL. Uh, we do have the applicant with us tonight. Okay. Does the applicant want to come down and add any further comments or provide clarification? Ms. Williams, hit the tripod. Thank you. Thank 
Thank you. Good evening, I'm Brian Cardozo with Rooker Riverside LLC, 445 Bishop Street, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318. Uh, presenting this development plan application to you tonight, it, it, you saw me not too long ago, I was here at the last meeting getting this special land use permit. It's the same building, nothing has changed just since that approval to tonight, we've been working with staff to make sure this development plan met the requirements of, of code. Um, no changes, like I said, have been made to this. What well, we did get one response from, from the fire marshal's office about how we needed to straighten up a section of our driveway so that the ladder could properly access the roof. We've done that, submitted it back to them, and received no further comment. And I'm happy to answer questions. Right, um, I will turn to the rest of council for question and comments, and I will start on my far right, not just because it's his birthday today, but also because, <laughs> mainly because it is, this is his ward. Um, thank you, Mr. Cardoza. Um, I would say it's always good to see you, but I can't say that. I'm joking. <laughs> um, Understood. Happy birthday. Uh, um, I, I appreciate that you're, you're, you're quick response to the uh, fire marshal's concern. Um, I'm not overly surprised because you, you have been very responsive to requests from, from many different angles. So um, I'm, I'm glad to, to hear that that has, has been straightened out. And uh, you know, we've, we've gone through several uh, sessions over this parcel and, and the development, I, I see nothing that would, would change my support for it. Thank you. Thank you, Council Masties. Any other questions or comments from Madam Mayor or the rest of the Council? I don't have any. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. Seeing none, um, I have nothing to add to this. So uh, um, I guess we will just take this up on Monday for a vote. And we'll thank you very much for okay. the presentation. Yeah. We'll see you then. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cardoza. Madam Mayor, that is all I have under the uh, Planning and Development Committee at this time. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. I appreciate you taking that committee. We'll move on to Public Improvement and Beautification Committee. The chair and vice chair are both um, on vacation, so I would ask the committee member, Dr. Bird Danley, if you don't mind taking this committee, please. Right, thank you. And this, there are no items tonight, um, Madam Mayor, under public improvement and beautification. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Dr. Burdanley. We'll move on to the Public Relations Committee. That's chaired by Council Member Howard Estes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Public Relations Committee has no business this evening. Thank you, sir. We'll move on to the next committee, item 13, which is Public Safety Committee. That's chaired by Council Member Samuel Davis. Yes, ma'am, Madam Mayor. I have a couple of items. Uh -huh. uh, Item A, hold a public hearing to consider request for an alcoholic beverage license for the on-premises sale and consumption of wine and malt beverage and the spirits liquor at the following establishment. Proposed license, Broad Street Dep Depot, LLC, DBA, Broad Street Station, location 12377 Ben Memorial Highway. Proposed mm -hmm. agent outlet manager, Sean McPherson, and crowd fees have been paid into the finance department with Mr. McPherson P. Come down. How are you today, sir? Doing great. This is my attorney, Jonathan Hackley. Good evening. Okay, good. Uh, at the time, uh, uh, I asked the mayor and council to have any questions before we hold our public hearing, starting with the mayor. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Good to see you again, Mr. McPherson. I know you've given your name and address in a previous um, item where you talked about the airspace. So I just had a question about um, your license for alcoholic beverage just experience. I know you've talked about this before, but we may have a new audience with citizens. And since you're opening soon, we pray this month that if you could just give us a brief overview of your experience and what uh, your establishment will um, consist of at Broad Street Station, the formerly the pub. Okay, my experience, first of all, I was uh, worked for 15 years for a, a kind of a, an Atlanta institution called Smith's Old Bar, Fulton mm -hmm. County in the city. Did uh, live music, about 500 shows a year. Mm -hmm. I worked 
you know, uh, it, it, as the primary talent buyer and, 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 and in, a, in effect kind of the CEO of, of the company for 15 years. So mm -hmm. that's my experience coming to this. It's definitely on the music side, but also a lot of restaurant experience as well. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, in terms of uh, the uh, concept, are you asking? Exactly? Yes, sir. So it, it's an event driven, uh, you know, restaurant a taqueria mm -hmm. concept. So we're going to have music in events seven nights a week. Mm -hmm. And then we're also going to have a, a full service restaurant downstairs taqueria as well. Very good. Did you say anything about car shows and all of that? I'm sorry, say that car, car shows? Car shows? No, no, that wasn't no. you. I no, was that just wasn't wondering. me, sorry. My son was asking me about car shows, so I didn't know if that was your restaurant or not. Um, um, alcohol license, um, how do you, your training for your servers, do you have a process and, and We're going to require that? all of our servers and, and bartenders to be TIP certified and also to have a, their background checked by the city to get their, um, I think they have to get a, um, a, a license from the city as well for Excuse me, okay. can you speak up just a little more, Sean, so we can hear you speaking to the mic? Thank We're going to have all of our bartenders and servers be certified, TIPS certified, TIPS training, and also they have to go to a, um, a background check and get a license from the city as well. Yes, if sir. I'm not mistaken. And they'll card everyone. Absolutely. Whether you, look, you have gray hair or not. You're, you're Absolutely. Honest. They're going to okay. card everyone every okay. single time. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's all I had. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. In a, any other council member? Council Watts? No, sir. Council Miller? Okay. Uh, Sean, uh, we have to have a, a public hearing for your license, and it's five minutes for those who will speak against your license, and five minutes that will speak for your license. And at this time, we open up the floor for those who come down to speak uh, in favor of your license. Okay, since we have no takers, five minutes to speak against your license. No one online, so uh, since we have no takers, we close the public hearing. And if you come back on Monday, and we'll give you a, a decision. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you at six on Monday. Stuck on decision, promise. <laughs> we'll give you the decision. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Oh, God. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Okay, let's move right along. Madam Mayor, hold yes, a public sir. hearing and to consider a re request. Request for an alcoholic beverage license for the on-premises sale and consumption of wine, malt beverage, and spirits liquor at the following establishment. Proposed license, Grits Brunch Bar, LLC, DBA, Grits Brunch Bar, location 6671 Church Street. Proposed agent outlet manager, Tanisha Forts, and the ride fees have been paid into finance department. How are you today? Hi, fine. I'm sure. Yes, ma'am. Pull it down just a little okay. and so speak Grace loud Brunch and Brunch. clear so okay. I can hear. Uh, Grits Brunch Bar, 6671 Church Street. This is my first time here, so yes. I didn't give y'all my address. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, good. Our mayor and council, we will ask you the same questions that we asked the last applicant before we have a public hearing, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, start with our mayor, Madam Mayor. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Good to see you, Ms. Force. How are you? Fine. Good, good. Don't be nervous. We don't, we don't fight. Oh, just been working hard. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are an experienced business owner. Um, you've had great uh, success in business. And I was just wondering if you can give us an overview. People keep asking me, grits bar, they're just going to have grits. And if it's a bar, you have an, uh, mimosas or something that for your spiritus uh, liquor license. So if you can just give us an overview of what your uh, concept of your business is and what your... Uh, what it you know just the concept of the business and then your training as far as your service are concerned okay um we're gonna we're what we're trying to do is bring an upscale experience to brunch to douglasville because there's no brunch places you know as everybody know everybody love brunch right so me and my partner which is april williams she owns april's place she's my partner so mm -hmm. we just want to bring a good experience for everyone we're making all our service um get a training mm -hmm. our bartenders get training this is my first restaurant I've, I did it about 15 to 16 years ago, but I didn't have a bar. Right. So it's my very first time in a bar. We will card everybody. I'm very strict on alcohol, how, many, mm -hmm. how much people drink. Um, I've been telling my servers and my manager to make sure they're paying attention to people drinking. Mm -hmm. You know, don't let people over drink because I'm very careful. The main reason I wanted it was for mimosas because, you know, if everybody yes. knows, people love mimosas with brunch. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. But just to bring something different to Douglasville, I, I, I'm a business owner out here for years, mm -hmm. and I've always wanted, I like to try different things. And I just want to try it. I think it's going to be very, very good. We're very, very excited. We've been working day and night. We just literally walked across the street because uh -huh. we've been working all day. So we're excited to bring it, and we're just excited about being here. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. And we appreciate you investing in another business in the city. Mm -hmm. I know you have several. Oh, yes. um, and congratulations on your daughter graduating from UGA. Thank Councilman you. Uh, Adams isn't here. Okay, he'll be here on Monday, and he'll be happy to know that there is another dog <laughs> that graduated from UGA. So congratulations on your daughter. Thank you. We're oh, I didn't tell you my menu. So we have shrimp and grits, chicken and waffles, um, oxtails and grits. We have grit bowls. We have vegan dishes like burgers, quesadillas. Mm -hmm. So we have a little bit of everything that can kind of, a little a couple of soul food dishes as well. Mm -hmm. So we kind of mix it up. But we're very, very excited. We've been tasting all day. Oh, yes, ma'am. It's a great location. We're excited yes, thank as you. well. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, what is the opening date? Um, actually, next Saturday. Next Saturday? June 12th. Okay, and could you repeat one more time how are you going about training um, your staff with alcohol? Let me tell you what it is. She's going to tell you what it's called. Um, the, the RAS workshop. I'm sorry, you have to give us your name and address for the record. Okay. So we'll have I'm sorry. April Williams, 6671 mm -hmm. Church Street, Douglasville, 30134. Yes. Um, we took a workshop called Ross workshop um, for alcohol um, mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. And we have to um, go under the serve safe, also the staff members for um, alcohol permits. Yes. Okay. And background checks, I'm sorry, background checks and all that too. We're gonna make sure that background check everybody. Mm -hmm. We're gonna, um, it's, I think it's called tips or something. They have to take a class, so we're, all, we're, we're doing that. But of course, everybody knows it's hard to get staff right now, so we're trying our best. Yes. Um, right now, we just had one bartender that applied yesterday. She was great, so we're doing a background check on her. Mm -hmm. But we're going to make sure everybody's trained fully before we... Nobody can touch it without being trained and certified yes, to do it, to do yes, so. Yes, ma'am. And you're going to check every person that orders alcohol as every, well. Okay. Every person, no matter if you look 10 or 56. Yes, We're going to check you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Any other... Okay. Cuffs Watts? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just was curious about uh, your operating hours. Um, right now, we're um, debating on opening. We're closed right now Monday and Tuesday. We're going to open Monday, I mean Wednesday through Sunday. But we've been talking today because everybody said a lot of the restaurants are closed on Mondays. And we want to kind of be open for the city officials and people. We don't want to have breakfast and brunch, but we're considering doing seven days a week. But right now, we're Wednesday through Sunday for now. Okay. Maybe seven days. All right. Thank you. In the Thank time. You. Oh, we're going to open at 8. 8 to 4 on Wednesday and Thursday, Friday 8 to 6, and Saturday and Sunday 10 to 6. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, anyone else before we hold a public hearing? Okay, at this time we will hold a public hearing and five minutes for those who speak uh, against your license and five minutes for those who speak uh, for your license. At this time, we open up the perfect hearing. If anyone here they want to speak, and come on down. Okay, we have anyone who want to speak uh, for the uh, alcoholic license, come on down. Since today we have no takers, we'll close the public hearing, and you all come back on Monday, and uh, we have your decision. Okay, can you hold out the Monday? Yes, sir, we can. <laughs> okay. Look forward to it. All right. Thank you. Thank y'all. Congratulations. Thank you too. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving right along to mm -hmm. item C. Authorize the Douglasville Police Department to apply for the 2021 Bulletproof Best Grant from the U.S. Department of Justice, DOJ, Bureau of Justice Assistance in the amount of $23,839 for half of the cost of 62 bulletproof vests, and Ms. Shaw. Good evening, Madam Good Mayor evening. and Council. Uh, the Douglasville Police Department is requesting to apply for the 2021 bulletproof vest grant from the Department of Justice. This is a grant that we apply for every year, and I, as far back as I can remember, we've received it each year, but the Department of Justice will reimburse the city for half the cost of mm -hmm. each bulletproof vest that we buy for our officers. And the anticipated amount that we are asking for is $23,839. Okay. Mayor, Madam Mayor. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Um, and, and Chief, we know, and Deputy Chief, we know your address, which is your Deputy Chief Sue Ann Shaw. Sue Ann Shaw, Douglasville Police Department, 2083 Fairburn Road. 
Yes, ma'am. And why do you only have 62 vests? Are they rotating? You have some that are that we had gotten last year, or what we do? The vests are replaced every five years. So mm -hmm. each officer, we have a spreadsheet that we keep up when it's going to be replaced. We anticipate the number of turnover that we have, the number of vacancies we've had, mm -hmm. and they ask for a two-year projection, and that's how we came up with the number 62. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, Deputy Chief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, it's a pleasure, Madam Mayor. Can I put this on the consent agenda for, for Monday? So I see head moving. shaking. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, you ma'am. Moving on to item D. Authorize the closing of Church Street between Spring Street and Bowden Street on the Saturday, June 19, 2021, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. for the annual Juneteenth Festival in downtown Douglasville. Madam Mayor, this is one that's been happening for over 13 or 14 years in the downtown mm -hmm. and have had it out at Hunter Park during the time of renovation of the uh, downtown near Plaza. So uh, they're asking for the uh, church street to be closed in between the hours for, uh, for the festival. Mr. Chair, can I ask for a clarification? It says between, church street between Spring Street and Bowden Street? Should be Price Spring Avenue. Street doesn't cross Bowden. Yeah, I mean, I'll make that correction. Church. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna clean my twilight zone. Okay. Good, okay. <laughs> <That's> good, <laughs> good trick. Okay, anyone else? Madam Mayor. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. The, um, thank you so much, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, for I was think, trying to visualize in my mind as well the streets Street um, that were Spring indicated on the um, item. But the other thing was crowd. Um, I know that. Has it been totally lifted? I was reading through the governor's uh, new order today. I know we can have festivals and concerts and all of that. So um, before people say anything, I just need for us to publicly say um, in a meeting what there are as far as having a city event so we don't get calls. Because I did get calls at the from the last council meeting when um, citizens didn't see all of us with our mask on. And I'm sure I'll get calls today because we aren't socially distanced. And there are still, you know, my daughter works at the mall. They still have them socially distancing and wearing masks um, for her summer job. So just wanted to this put the information a, out there. This is not a city event, ma'am. Uh, Councilman Davis um, is asking on behalf of Behe. They mm -hmm. filled out their permit and rented the plaza. Um, Mr. Davis said they have a small event. I think, I can't remember the number that you mentioned, but I know you've right. gotten with staff to apply for your permits. But it's not a city-held event. So it's, but it's open to the public. So we don't have a, we don't have anything as far as counting or it's up to the private. Are people going to sign waivers or how does all that work? Mm -hmm. We're not, man, we're not managing the event. Okay. Um, Councilman Davis has asked to close the street just because I believe you're going to have um, a, a uh, the, collaboration uh, with the county uh, with the for county. a location for a bus for a yeah. voter registration. Mm -hmm. County and Walgreens bringing out a bus uh -huh. for uh, COVID-19 uh, shots. And uh, Douglas helped us go provide a, uh, a booth. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so uh, you got to have space for them and then a couple of food vendors. Yeah, I was just asking about okay. the, you know, the capacity. Mm -hmm. Right. It'll be walking in and out all day. Probably. So it was outside. So it, it will comply with the governor's orders? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. okay. That's all I was making sure of. So I just want to, because I'm, I'm sure we'll get some emails and calls. Okay. Any other yeah. questions? Madam Mayor, I'd like to put this on the consent agenda for Monday also. It's I don't see any objection. I'll okay. Be fine. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Thank you so much, Madam Mr. Mayor, thank Chairman. You. Thank you so much, Councilman Davis. We'll move on then to the next agenda item, which is Recreation, Culture, and Tourism Committee. That's shared by Councilmember Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have two items tonight. Item mm -hmm. eight, authorize the mayor to sign an agreement with uh, DLL Finance LLC for the lease of golf carts to West Pines Golf Course. Uh, Mr. Cartwright will present tonight. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Chris Cartwright, 9090 Rose Avenue. <clears throat> so DLL is the finance company. The golf cart company is Club Car. This is the same company that our last two fleets have been with. Uh, 
So we are hoping to move forward with a new fleet of 72 golf carts with Club Car. The biggest change here <clears throat> is that they're lithium battery powered. The current fleet and previous fleet were lead acid battery powered. We're looking at a weight reduction of 600 pounds per golf cart. So left less turf compaction. Uh, so the grass will be healthier. It's gonna look like the golf course is getting less play, which is a good thing in terms of the grass health. The batteries are also much cheaper to charge. We're looking at a savings of $9 per car per month. So you're looking at about $7,800 annually savings in the electrical bill. The entire industry is trending towards the lithium powered golf carts. Club cars saying in the next three to four years, they won't even offer a lead acid battery cart. We are looking to do this new fleet because we have a good problem. We've been so busy that the golf carts are giving us some issues in terms of their usage. The lead acid batteries have limited amp hours that they can handle. Mm -hmm. So between the increased play and allowing golfers to take their own golf cart with the COVID pandemic, it has really taken a wear and tear on our current fleet. Mm -hmm. The uh, new golf carts will have the uh, GPS and that? That's correct. Our uh, existing technology with the GPS, the yardages for the golfers, and from a golf course management perspective, the geofencing, all of those capabilities will stay with the new fleet. We also got a quote from EasyGo, the other major manufacturer that offers lithium battery carts. Club car being the cheaper alternative by $11,000 annually uh, between the golf cart lease and the GPS feature. The third major manufacturer, Yamaha, does not offer a lithium-powered golf cart. And did you say that the different batteries, the lithium batteries, would reduce the weight of, by 600, 600 pounds? 600 pounds. So if you, if you lift up the seat of the golf cart in, a current, in our current fleet, you would see six batteries that are roughly this size, larger than a car battery. Each one of them has six of them. The new lithium powered battery will be about the size of a briefcase perhaps. Wow. Yeah. Good deal. Well, and we like, like it when we can save some money. So thank you for that. Uh, Madam Mayor, do you have anything? I do. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. We appreciate you coming in, yes, especially in the rain. Can't play today. It was um, nice earlier. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, so the lithium batteries, you say, are, are, are much smaller. Yes, ma'am. What are we going to do with the other car, uh, the other golf carts that we have currently? We're leasing those so we can... They're, they're the end of the currently lease? leased, so they'll go back to Augusta. The, uh -huh. the trucks that will drop off the new cars, they'll roll the old cars up on them and drive them away, and we'll switch over the whole fleet in about an hour and a half. Okay, and how many did you say? 72. 72, is that how much we, how many we, we currently, currently have? We currently have 72 as well, yes ma'am. Okay, and the um, seating, how is e the seating? Each, each cart uh, can take two golfers, uh, and currently we have approximately seven or eight golf carts that are down because of bad batteries. Mm. So an hour worth of play is about 10 golf carts. So without having our full fleet, we're missing out on some revenue opportunities. Okay, and um, Councilman Watts did ask about uh, the amenities inside of the golf, little bells and whistles. Do yes, we still have the, um, where you can watch TV at the same time? As I know some people when they're golfing, they wanna watch, we, keep we up did, with We did eliminate that and, program uh, a couple years ago. The software is a little too glitchy, uh -huh. uh, but the current program still has the overview of the course, giving the player the yardage, and you can connect your phone okay. via Bluetooth to the, to the, the tablet that's attached. So if you had something, some music playing on your phone, perhaps that can play through the speakers on the cart. Okay, and that's probably what I was thinking of because I know we were yes, watching something at the same time. Um, I think that's it. I'm, I'm trying to remember if there was something else. And you are saying it's gonna help our course because it won't be um, so much tread and, and the wheels or whatever, the weight of the golf court carts that we currently have. Yes, ma'am. So, lithium. 30,000 rounds a year on our mm -hmm. golf course, and that's, a, that's a, lot of, uh, a lot of pounds riding across those fairways. And as, if you're playing properly, all the carts kind of end up in the same areas. So that 600 pounds is gonna really help the grass stay a lot healthier.
And the make, it isn't Yamaha, what's the make? Uh, Club Car. Club, Club Car. car so. And we are anticipating the new fleet, if approved by council, to be arrived prior to the PGA event in August. That's okay. one of the reasons we wanted to bring this to you guys now. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That'll, yeah, that'll look really nice, having brand new carts, I guess, for the tournament. That'll help us, our image, certainly. Um, this question is not directly related to the golf carts, but I'm wondering, we, the city has a lot of small carts that we use either in uh, the rest, throughout Parks and Rec and, and the sanitation and maintenance departments. Is this an opportunity we should be looking at in other departments to, to do they even offer uh, carts with lithium batteries um, that can serve other purposes around the city? I know maintenance has a lot of small, like the, the, the gators and stuff like that. I mean, and maybe, I don't know if you can answer that or Greg, maybe. I, I'm not 100% sure. I can tell you if they don't right now, they're coming. Mm -hmm. Every Everything that is the lead acid battery is being transitioned to the lithium. Uh, you know, my dad was looking at a lawnmower that was one of those electric ones. I told him, wait a year, and the next year the lithium model came out. Mm. So, Greg, are you aware of anything that's coming in your department that we can use? We're not currently using any of those small vehicles. Okay. They have such high maintenance. What we use it for, we Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That's all. What's the uh, charge time on, a, on the difference? Uh, so the lead acid battery is a full overnight charge of eight hours, and the new lithium can charge in half the time, wow. four hours. Good deal. All right. Any other questions? Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Davis. Uh, lifespan of the batteries. So the the lease is for 50 months. They they do offer a 60 month option where they will warranty the battery for the entire length of the lease. My concern with that lease term is that the rest of the golf cart is the same as the golf cart we currently have, and they've been doing four-year leases forever. So I'm concerned that the steering wheel, the steering column, the brakes, the pedals, I don't know that those items can last five years, even if the batteries can. Hmm. Okay. Uh, miss, uh, any, any other questions? Is there a, what other golf courses around us are using these type of carts the lithi with the lithium batteries that you know of? Uh, anyone that has upgraded in the last couple of years has switched to lithium. Uh, I'm not aware of what maybe okay. Chapel Hill, Mirror Lake has. I do know that the lithium battery has been extremely popular in the hillier areas of the state. Uh, Big Canoe has them, um, Innisbrook Resort has them now. So the, the lithium battery really does well in the hilly terrains. We don't have extreme yeah. hills, but we, got, we have enough that it, it does matter. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Oh, Monday, thank you. can you have a report on Monday who using those? I can, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Cartwright, I guess you'll bring that back to us on Monday. And uh, two council members that aren't here, they might have some questions, but it sounds sounds great and appreciate uh, y'all uh, saving the city money. Mm -hmm. Thank you like very much. That. Thank you. All right. Um, my second item, mm -hmm. authorize the mayor to sign a service agreement with the Cultural Arts Council, Douglasville, Douglas County, Inc., for cultural arts services. And Ms. Jackson will take this. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Chelsea Jackson, 6695 Church Street. Mayor and Council, this is a routine agreement between the city and the CAC for cultural arts services. The agreement will start July 1st of this year and end June 30th of next year. Um, it is the previous um, amount as previous years. Ms. Leitner did come and speak two weeks ago and asked for a request of increase about $6,000. Um, of course, the budget for fiscal year 22 has been approved, so any consideration with an, for an increase would have to go through a budget amendment later on this year. Thank you, uh, Ms. Jackson. Um, so what was the increase again? She requested, so currently it's about 49000 that's budgeted in the budget for the services. She requested about $55,000, if my math is correct, an additional $6,000. And um, the, uh, the county also contributes to them? Yes, they do. What, how much are they contributing? I am unsure of that amount. I believe it is in the range of a, about $55,000, but I'm unsure. I can get you that amount. 
Uh, Madam Mayor, you... it's about that. I believe it's around fifty-five thousand. Okay. All right. Uh, any uh, questions or comments for Ms. Jackson? I did have a yes. question. Thank you so much, Mr. Yes, Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Jackson, for bringing the report for CAC. Do we know if they're going to do the chili cook-off or have some kind of variation of that like they did uh, the taste of Douglasville? Yes, ma'am. I have spoken with Ms. Leitner. She plans on coming before council in August like she did for the mm -hmm. taste just to um, talk about what she plans on doing as it relates to the chili cook-off. She hopes it'll be back to normal, but she will come before you all in August before she starts advertising for that mm -hmm. event. Okay, and I know they need our support for that, so that's why we continue to give uh, to the arts. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, and just want to say, Emily Leitner has done a remarkable job in keeping it together, and mm -hmm. what she's done with the Arts Council, especially through the middle of a pandemic, is, is truly remarkable. So um, I'm glad we can support her to the best ability that we can. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Estes, did you have some? I, I would just uh, echo what, what Mayor Partem just said. Um, Ms. Leitner is amazing, um, and the CAC is an incredible asset for the city. So, so I, I say let's go for it. Okay. <laughs> um, is, is this an item that would be okay to put on a consent agenda? If, is everybody Looks okay? Looks like hands are nodding. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Thank you. Madam Mayor, that's all I had tonight. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. We'll move on then to item number 15, which is Technology Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Mayor Pro Tem Terry Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we have two <coughs> items under the Technology Committee at this time. And the first is to authorize the mayor to sign an agreement with the NXT Soft Cybersecurity Solutions LLC for cybersecurity cyber consultation services and software. Say that three times fast. <laughs> All right. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, so the first item we have there, NetSoft. Do your uh, name. Your name I'm sorry. Sam. Okay. Sam Jenkins, 6695 uh, Church Street, IT Manager. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. So uh, the first item is uh, NetSoft. Uh, so what they pretty much deal with is cybersecurity. We know the last recent events with a lot of cybersecurity attacks and things like that. So that's a very serious uh, uh, Thing for the for the city and for around the world actually. So we've been looking for like cybersecurity company for a while now. So we selected one that we thought were a good fit for the city. They uh, actually specialize in like doing banks, uh, cybersecurity as well, and also hospital, with, which really have very hard security. So uh, what this company right here would do is they will provide a 24/7 cybersecurity monitoring, and also they'll give us training as well, including all the employees as well. So they'll give us a dashboard, let us know uh, if we do have any things that are weakened in the system, how to hearten them. So they're gonna first start out by doing another IT risk assessment, which we just performed one last year. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna do annual IT risk assessment, let us know where we weak, let us know where we can harden. And while cybersecurity, that's one of the things that it's all what you always need to be improving. You always gotta be trying to find a hole, harden them up. So it's good that, and recommended that you have some, uh, some outside expert come in and help you out too to look at the things that you don't see. So. This is what NetSoft will provide for us, uh, those type things. And like I said, in training as well. Uh, and in the event that we do have an incident, they will, be, they will have hands on the ground, boots on the ground, ready to help us out, fight the uh, threats. So, Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Um, the, the threat is real and the threat is continuous. And that is the mm -hmm. times we live in, unfortunately, when it comes to uh, cybersecurity. So mm -hmm. any questions or comments from Madam Mayor? Or only comment I have, I know that there was, and the judge reminded me today too, that some fraudulent email went out that I, you know, was soliciting resources. So how can we, <laughs> how can we um, really block that or? Unfortunately, uh, those are the things, that's where the training come in at, uh -huh. uh, where, because uh, really your weakest link is, we can put all the type of system out of the firewall, the uh, filtering for the emails mm -hmm. um, and things like that. But uh, it just takes someone uh, going to create an email address, a fake email address, mm -hmm. and trying to send an email out impersonating someone, uh, uh, you mainly, and also mm -hmm. other city uh, managers and things like that, and try to do a uh, lower end user and things mm -hmm. like that. So really that training is what really uh, pertinent in those situations right there. And it's one of the things where you can't really, now when we get those email, we block them, mm -hmm. but what the bad guys will do, they'll go create more. They'll, they'll go create more fake emails and try to lure people in by phishing. So some of the things that we're gonna do is actually do more phishing, uh, 
attacks and phishing alerts and things like that. And NetSoft's going to help with that by sending phishing alerts so we can train the users. Like, what are the things to look out for? Mm -hmm. What are the things to, uh, and how to respond, not to click on links, those type of things like that that will, like, expose us. So, um, training, training, okay. really. Now, we do have Barracuda uh, email filter, which catches tons. They catch tons of those emails, mm -hmm. but they don't catch them all. Right. Neither solution is 100%, but uh, it's up to uh, the user at the end to make sure that they don't click anything that will expose us. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions or comments from council? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Watts. Just, just a quick question. I, I think I know the answer to this, but to open an email isn't going to cause a problem. It's clicking on something inside the email, right? I mean, well, Open an email is, uh, it, it depends on how the author really wrote it. Uh, most of the emails that are, uh, a virus attack that are written now doesn't launch automatically and things like that, which is good. Uh, and most of the emails now are automatically scanned by either Microsoft, Gmail, all the type of, they, they're scanned for. So it's not as bad as it used to be back in the day 10 years ago. So what they have got clever with now, with embedding those links. And when you embed those links in there, you click on that, that's when a program actually initiates and can do some harsh things. Uh, so, but if an email looks, but, but, but that doesn't mean that it can't happen. You still gotta be alert and things like that. So I still be, if it doesn't look right or looks too suspicious, just delete it. And the best thing to do is just pick up the phone call and call. Uh, Marsha, did, 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 did you really send this right here? You know, things like that. That's the best thing to do. If it looks fishy or looks kind of funny, just, just, just pick up the phone and like uh, call that person. Thank you. Awesome. Thank and you're awesome. all waiting forward to IT. You can forward it to us and we can like investigate and look at the email and like l let you know if it's legit or not. As well. Somebody's offering you access to a, a fortune somewhere in, in uh, <laughs> Lithuania. <laughs> Beware, you know, be cautious. And it's right. probably not going to happen. Um, I know that IT has uh, compared prices on different systems, so I know also we're getting the best system for the, for the cost. So was there any objections? I'd like to place this on the consent agenda for Monday. Okay. It looks good. Thank you. And second item is you authorize the mayor to sign an agreement with TSA Inc. for the subscription of cloud-based server backup service. Mr. Jenkins. All right. So this is another solution like moving forward in the direction where we're going to with like cloud backup. This is a part of the whole IT security as well. Uh, currently, we don't have like an off-site backup, a cloud backup, and that's what really recommend it. So when you do, if you are hit or anything does happen uh, or if the building is bombed or whatever the case may be, you need a way to be able to restore your system and things like that. So what's recommended is to pretty much have your backup up in the cloud. So mm -hmm. this is what uh, TSA via Barracuda, who we're going to be with. We already used using Barracuda email filter, but uh, Barracuda also we're going to give us some appliance both for like City Hall and also at the PD. So what they do is back up all our applications, all our servers and things, and back those up each night up to the server to mm -hmm. them. But further more than that, we're also going to have cloud-to-cloud -cloud backup. What cloud-to-cloud -cloud backup is, where we back up Microsoft All 365, which we all use, to their cloud backup. That's what recommended as well, because even though Microsoft uh, it lives in the cloud, All 365 lives in the cloud, which is great, mm -hmm. Microsoft don't guarantee that they're actually backing it up. Uh, so the things like our email, Microsoft Teams, the OneDrive, SharePoint, all those things like that, this will also include that as well. Now, they gave, they gave us an incredible price. I was kind of shocked. Uh, but the price they're giving us for this right here, they gave us like an 80, 85% discount right. on this solution right here. So we wanted to jump on that. It's, we have others, but it's like what we're paying in for the whole five years, other companies were like one year. And like a Bar and Barracuda is a solid product. I use it pr prior. Uh, and we use it here too, uh, so it's a trusted solution. Thank you, sir. Any questions, comments, Madam Mayor? Anybody else? Right. Um, it is something that's long time in coming for the city. We definitely, I, I can say from personal experience, I mean, my company, we do uh, cloud-based backup, and I learned that the hard way <laughs> a number of years ago, what happens if you don't have off-site backup. And, and considering that we haven't had for the, all these years, it's definitely, um, it's a uh, good idea. It's a mm -hmm. long time coming. Thank you, sir. Again, unless there's any objections uh, to this item, I'd like to place it also on the consent agenda for Monday. Okay. All right. Madam Mayor, that is all I have under the Techno Technology Committee at this yeah. time. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. We'll move on then to Transportation Committee, our last committee, which is chaired by Councilmember Dr. LaShawn Burdanley. No business tonight, Madam Mayor. Thank you so much. You're welcome. 
I will move on then to other business. Is there any other business from council members that we have um, this evening to talk about? Thank you, I don't see any. Then we have um, updates from city staff, our city attorney, Mr. Joel Dodson. No business, Madam Mayor. Thank you, sir. Staff attorney, Ms. Lynn Woodward. No business, Madam Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, chief of police, our deputy chief, Deputy Chief Sue Ann Shaw. No business, Madam Mayor, thank you. You're welcome, thank you, ma'am. Our city manager, Ms. Marcia Hampton. Yes, ma'am, the only comment that I have, I know you all um, mentioned festivals earlier and we have made the decision not to go forward with the July 4th parade, but have the fireworks. Uh, the bulk of the reasoning for that really is staffing. Um, by the time we got notice from the governor's office and this thing started to move toward a sense of normalcy, um, we just really don't have time to plan an effective event as well as um, have an event that requires boots on the ground from all city staff. I think we all have talked about the short staff in public services as well as um, the short staff in public safety. Um, that event requires all um, departments to work um, and just like all of the other industries that are suffering with um, high areas of turnover and short staff, we are um, no different. So we're managing as best that we can. Uh, we do uh, expect that we'll be back to normal um, July 4th of 2022, and hopefully that will allow for some return to normalcy in the employment arena as well. Um, so um, just as businesses are suffering, and we're doing the same. Uh, the Labor Day Parade will move forward. The reason that one can is because we don't manage it. So uh, the Shriners do. I think um, I've asked Greg to reach out to those individuals who organized that parade I know that many of you all who may be running for um, re-election, you do participate in that event. Uh, but we do expect we will be able to uh, support that because, and again, we'll be in a supportive capacity and it won't be the reliance upon all the city staff. Thank you so much, Ms. Hampton. I do have a, um, a comment and, and question to, to follow up with your statement about the 4th of July parade. I have had um, concerns about that and, and many questions, and I think we're having a shoebox something shoebox parade for the 4th of July the city sponsoring we do our community relations department is doing that. if we have somebody in community relations who's working the event they may be able to come out and um, speak on the specifics of that well Emily's here okay and while Emily's coming Miss Hardaway um, and you talked about Labor Day the Veterans Day Parade I know the county sponsors that it's an evening parade and um, Christmas I'm not certain about Veterans Day because the county does that event. I'm not certain where they are in uh, mm -hmm. mobilizing their activities. Um, my hope is that we can. Um, again, it, it really is an issue of staffing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hopeful that by this fall there will be a significant change in employees returning to work. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it just, even when it comes to keeping up with our day-to-day, -day, it is very, very tough. So wow. um, when we're down, I'll just use the police department as an example, when we're down 10 to 15 officers, we have to allow for time for people to take off mm -hmm. work because they're covering for vacancies. Yeah. So when you are um, managing events such as that, it is overtime. Mm -hmm. And so there's only so many hours in the day to allow for our, our you know, officers to be able to work in the same with Greg's staff. So I'm hopeful that by September, mm -hmm. um, there will be a change in employees returning to work. And so some of our vacancies that we have can be filled by December. Okay, maybe we can, um, I don't know, solicit volunteers from the community. I know people want to celebrate if we have um, a vaccination rate um, from the county, from Community Services Board and Public Health, where it's safe for us to do that. Um, maybe we can be creative and kind of think outside the box for Christmas or something. That would be a wonderful time to have something in the city to celebrate um, the time of the year and uh, getting together, if we're able to do that safely. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And the other thing that we're continuously being mindful of is, is just the area of the pandemic and the safe and safety matters and mm -hmm. emergency, of course, we're moving into a different season of the year. So yeah. as the orders and the pandemic shift, we're just being flex we're being flexible with that with ourselves and being and trying our best to do the things that we can mm -hmm. um, uh, within reason, um, right. understanding our own limitations. But we're open to being 100 percent open as we can with our own manpower and capacity. Okay, thank you. Any comments from council members before we let Ms. Hardaway speak and give us some information about the shoebox parade for 4th of July? 
Thank you, I don't see any. Thanks, Ms. Emily. All right, uh, Emily Hardaway, 6695 Church Street. Um, yes, so we will be streaming on our Facebook page on the 4th of July, a shoebox parade. We have had um, a great input from the community. We have had lots of classes um, before school got out who whole classes uh, would, each student would do a shoebox and they dropped it off. We've had lots of businesses who've done shoeboxes and dropped them off and also lots of other people in the community. And we have created a great set um, in our studio, mm -hmm. and we have spent the last couple of weeks um, building that, and we've been filming um, this week. And so over the next couple of weeks, we'll edit it, um, and we'll be able to stream it live on Facebook on the 4th of July. Um, and so we will be able to have that for our citizens mm -hmm. in lieu of an actual in-person parade. And I believe the stream will begin at noon. Okay. But I will double check that time and I can confirm that with you guys on Monday. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Emily. Mm -hmm. I'm city manager. What time for fireworks? And um, is it at West Pines again? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, we shoot from West Pines and it's typically at dark. So sometimes that's anywhere between yeah. 9, 15, 930 PM. All right. Thank you all. Thank you, staff. Any other comments, city manager? Okay. We'll move on. Do we have staff reports this evening? All right, thank you. Comments from citizens and delegates. I know we do have some citizens in the audience. If you would like to address us with any concerns, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes um, to give us any comments that you might have, uh, Jermaine, to the city of Douglasville business. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Excellent. My name is Marshall Phipps. My address is 79 Brookside Court in Villa Rica. And I came to give you all a general update regarding my project at Hunter Park. It's been a while. Life has gotten in the way. Uh, been hopping between jobs. Finally got that tornado tank paid off. Thank goodness for that. And uh, my general update is this. Uh, first one. Remember the gentleman that was with me with some, uh, who was with me uh, some of the prior meetings, uh, Larry Pierce? Yes, sir. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, he's mostly out of the running with the project since COVID-19 sort of took him out of the game. He's... Uh, he's still alive, but he's uh, unfortunately in uh, pretty rough shape. But me and him, we've been talking. Uh, he's going to still try to help out however uh, he can. Mm -hmm. uh, so thankfully, he's still alive. Yeah, we'll be praying for Mr. Pierce. Go ahead. Yeah, I wish him the absolute best of luck because it's been rough for him. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do have some good news, though. So yesterday, I submitted a letter to the Environmental Protection Agency regarding my proposal at Hunter Park. I know that environmental factors will play a critical part in uh, my proposed operation. Uh, you should receive my letter later on once the meeting's over, so that way you can look over it. But just to assemble it up, the letter goes over my plan to rebuild the railroad, uh, build new facilities on site, such as locomotive maintenance, the new miniature amphitheater, uh, new railroad museum, which would also include the transport of a diesel locomotive from Irondale, Alabama to Douglasville. Uh, all of our engines will be uh, powered by either electric power or, in the case of one diesel locomotive, biodiesel. Uh, there will also be miniature wind turbines I do plan on installing on the site, as long as, as well as the buildings being powered by solar panels, since I want this to be sort of a clean operation. I know that uh, environmentalism is sort of the way to go, since I've sort of developed a green thumb myself. And I'm hoping to hear back from them soon. I'm not sure how long it takes uh, for a letter from the EPA to get back with me, but I do want to let you know about that, since uh, given that I now have more free time on my hands, I could finally pursue uh, my new goals. Uh, I've also been in talks with the Heart of Dixie Railroad Museum in Alabama. Mm -hmm. We should be retrieving the original train carriages from uh, the mountain in Alabama. They'll store those on site for the time being, and I do plan on reintegrating those with the diesel engine on site, try to get those cosmetically restored, and hopefully put those on display at a later date. And uh, definitely we'll be kicking off more marketing efforts regarding the promotion of the Friends of the Hunter Park Scenic Railroad Plan because I've looked back to the park. Uh, one of the staff members told me that they've been flooded with questions from citizens about when the train's coming back, which I, of course, can't provide a clear answer on that since there's still a bunch of whole kinks we got to sort of work out on that. Hopefully, phase one will start by next year, though it just sort of depends on circumstance, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll definitely be keeping in touch with you all regarding that. Okay, Mr. Phillips, I just had a question. Um, of course, you know, we've always talked about having a plan B as well, but when you uh, indicated that you were getting 
the caboose or the train from Alabama and you're going to store them on site until they're pre uh, repaired, where are you storing them? So as far as the ones that went with the original train, uh, you know the one in the brick shed next to the caboose on site? The one built back in 56, uh, the one that ran until 2009. The original wooden carriages, they were in the mountain. It was the ones that was uh, up there with the engine when it was supposed to be restored and reintegrated to service. Those will stay in, at the museum for the time being because they are in absolute poor condition, and I do plan mm -hmm. on cosmetically restoring those. Now, as far as the engine from Alabama, is a full-size diesel locomotive from the 1940s. I do mm -hmm. plan on bringing the uh, engine, the carriage, and uh, a passenger car. I do plan on putting those on the left side of the park next to that building over there since uh, I do want to sort of put a miniature railroad museum to the side and sort of integrate that with the railroad theme of the park. But uh, if that's not applicable, then I can simply drop that from the master plan I've I had laid out. But it's a large engine, uh, as large as the ones that are constantly going by. It's just much older. Hmm. Of course, I can show you some more pictures and information about that at a later time if you wished. Okay. I'm just wondering, when you're talking about storing, storing the, the trains for yeah, the, the city liability, yeah, and the all smaller, that, so. yeah, the smaller train carriages, which are still technically owned by the city, those will just stay in a controlled setting at the Railroad Museum in Alabama, mm -hmm. whereas another engine I've been looking at, I'm hoping to move that on site at Hunter Park once I get my whole master plan uh, worked out. Okay. I know, it's a, big, it's a big project. All right, we have any concerns, Senior Major? Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Any other comments from citizens and delegates? Yes, ma'am. Please come forward and give us your name and address for the record, and we'll be happy to hear from you. I am here to get, my name is Cindy Welch, 3002 yes, Concord Way, Douglasville, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to give thanks to two different groups, and I don't know who it is, but whoever is in charge of Hunter Park, that is the most beautiful park. My grandsons played baseball this summer. Thank goodness they didn't get to last year. But they went all around, Cobb County, Canastone, Fulton County, and there was not a park that would even compare to Hunter Park. Wow. It is, everybody talks about how nice it is, the seating is nice, the fields are nice, everything is wonderful. So I wanted to give a thanks to that. Ms. Welch, I'm gonna put this down in the archives. <laughs> Of annals of time that you. We, well, <laughs> no, I'm and just I have kidding. one more thanks. I appreciate to you. it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. At Freedom Island. Yes, ma'am. I guess that's what it's called at Hospital Drive, and yes, I came by there tonight, and it's gorgeous. Wow. I would hope you would all go by right now and see it. Well, thank you so much. That's Keep Douglasville Beautiful, um, which is under Mr. Roberts' department with Chan Weeks, and our Parks and Recreation Director is Mr. Landrum, and. Um, the director of um, Hunter Park, he, he already left. Oh, he's listening. So, Mr. Landry. Well, Hunter Park, one time we were there and someone said the lights are out in the women's bathroom. And I called the next morning and when we got there that night, they were fixed. Thank you so much. Thank you, we appreciate the Attaboys as well. It encourages us to keep continuing to move on. So see, I can see good things. Thank you, yes ma'am. <laughs> we appreciate you bringing everything to our attention. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Welch. Any other comments from citizens and delegates? No? Well, let me see if we have anything else. I know we have an executive session, so um, I'll open the floor for, uh, to go into executive session Excuse me. Miss Welsh got me all confused. I'm not used to her coming <laughs> and giving. But I will um, open the floor to adjourn into executive session for the purpose of discussing a pending litigation matter and a disposition of three real properties. Open the floor for a motion to go into executive session. 